I don't think an event of this kind would be complete without, well, something that you probably got used to during my days in Washington. One of my stories. It's a, it's a story about a woman who walked into a bridal shop one day and told the sales clerk that she was looking for a wedding gown for her fourth wedding. Well, the saleswoman asked, just exactly what type of dress are you looking for? A long, flowing white dress with a veil, she responded with assurance. Not totally convinced, but afraid to offend the woman, the sales lady said, you know, dresses of that nature are usually more appropriate for brides who are being married for the first time, for those a bit more innocent, if you know what I mean. Well, the lady retorted and put her hand on her hip. I do know what you mean, and I can assure you I'm as innocent as the rest of them. Despite all my marriages, I remain as innocent as any first-time bride. Well, you see, my first husband was a dear, sweet man. It was a terrible tragedy, actually. All the excitement of the wedding was simply too much for him, and he died as we checked into the hotel on our wedding night. I'm sorry to hear that, said the clerk, but what about the others? Well, my second husband and I got into a terrible fight in the limousine on the way to our wedding reception. We haven't spoken since and got the marriage quickly annulled. What about your third husband, asked the store clerk. Well, the woman replied, uh, he was a Democrat. <laughs> and every night for four years, he just sat on the edge of the bed and told me how good it was going to be. Sorry, I just couldn't resist telling you. <laughs> My friends, on a serious note, I would like to end by telling you something that Nancy and I have wanted to say to you for a long time. During our years together, here, as you know, things were always on the move. As soon as we accomplished one objective, we were quick on to the next. There was rarely time to celebrate victory or recall all the people who made it possible. Well, one of the benefits of retirement is you get a chance to reflect back over the years. Since Nancy and I have returned to California, we've spent many occasions looking back at what we did here and remembering the extraordinary people who worked so hard to make those great days possible. And we wondered if we would ever get the chance to thank them. Well, you are those people, those great individuals who gave so much of yourselves, who sacrificed and supported us and helped us achieve everything we did. So I will conclude tonight by saying the greatest gift I could receive on my birthday is to be able to stand before each and every one of you and convey in the only words I can how grateful Nancy and I are. Thank you for being there and for being here. And thank you for making this evening a memory I will cherish forever. And until we meet again, God bless you, my friends. Former President Ronald Wilson Reagan completing his live remarks at the National Building Museum in Washington. And we welcome our CNN International guests who or viewers who were following our live coverage of this speech. A brief speech by the former president who defended his two terms in office. He accused the Democrats of trying to rewrite history. And he said at one point, I'm getting awfully tired of the whining voices at the White House these days. 
President Reagan also said liberalism is unpopular now, and he accused President Clinton of grand larceny, of stealing Republican ideas in his State of the Union address last week. Mr. Reagan is 83 years old and displaying his humor. He said he is ruling out running for the presidency in 1996, but in his words, I've not ruled out the possibility of running in the year 2000. Susan? Bernie, thank you. And still ahead on Prime News, the current commander-in-chief and Vietnam, President Clinton lists a 30-year trade embargo. And so long, Sputnik. Hello, shuttle. NASA launches a Russian cosmonaut and opens a new cooperative venture with an one-time Cold War rival. Roger roll, Discovery.